Crystal, what are you taking a look at? Well, friends, the downfall began with a devastating political screw-up and a brutally telling gaffe. While Australians were suffering through the worst bushfires in history, Australian Prime Minister Scott Morrison decided it'd be a perfect time to take a little vacay to Hawaii. So as Australians were watching in horror as their lands and homes burned, and in certain cases fleeing for their lives, Morrison was blissfully watching the waves crash on the beach. Now, once public outrage set in, he then hurried back to his post. But his reappearance kind of only made things worse. Instead of expressing the contrition and regret that voters were presumably looking for, he instead bristled at the criticism and dismissed the concerns, insisting that his absence during the fires was just fine because, quote, I don't hold a hose mate. He also continued his beach going once back in Australia and was caught on camera in this little number. Sorry, everybody. I had to see that pic during my research, so now you... <laughs> also have to suffer with it too. Little did he know that soon enough, voters would send him packing on a very different trip indeed, because Morrison's troubles did not end with the climate crisis-fueled fires and his failed response to them. Far from it. There were also catastrophic issues with vaccine rollouts, leaving some major cities to be locked down for as many as nine months. There were corruption scandals that fueled voter concerns about government integrity. There were belated and tone-deaf responses to sexual harassment and assault scandals. Based on the polls and the voters that I heard interviewed, it all added up to a perception that he was completely disconnected from the issues that voters actually cared about, that he was a chameleon who adopted the persona he thought was most politically advantageous, that he was constantly shifting blame and denying responsibility for critical decisions, and that on a basic human level, he was really just a total jerk. So when election day arrived, voters handed him and his liberal party coalition of moderate, center-right, and right-wing candidates a drubbing at the polls. Now listen. I'm far from an expert on Australian politics, but there were two big trends that jump out of these results that have some echoes both here and around the world. So the first thing that is pretty clear is the rise of the independent voter and the downfall of both major parties. It's yet another rejection of the markets over everything politics that have dominated over the past 40 years. Now, Australian politics has basically always been a contest between the center-right liberals and the center-left Labour Party, with few other parties playing anything other than a marginal role. And Labour, the main center-left party, was in fact the major beneficiary of Morris's scandals and his failures. Their man, Anthony Albanese, was sworn in as prime minister on Monday, ending a decade of right-leaning governments. But it was hardly a soaring endorsement of center-left neoliberal governance. Both the Labour and Liberal parties suffered huge declines in their first preference vote totals. You can see here the blue line, that's their traditional center-right party, which has seen a huge decline. The red line is the Labour party, which somehow managed to win in spite of receiving its lowest ever first preference vote total. Australia uses ranked choice voting, so that's what that's all about. But equally interesting is that bottom black line, which is climbing higher and higher. That line represents the rapidly increasing share going to candidates who are not in either of those major parties. Two parties stood out among those independents. First, a group of women calling themselves the Teals. They ran in wealthy areas, traditionally strong for liberals, and they proved to be extremely successful at appealing to voters who were typically liberal voters, but disappointed with the party on corruption, women's equality, and in particular, climate change. Now, these women had a huge night, even ousting some high-level liberal officials. The other independent party making historic gains was the Greens. They ran on an all-out left populist platform, including bold action on climate, and they notched their best results in history. Not only did they grab their highest ever vote totals, but they could hold as many as five seats in the lower house. Now, that might not sound like much, but it'd actually be the largest minor party stake in Australia since 1949. All of this also sounds a lot like what we just saw in the French election, where the traditional center-right and center-left parties were complete non-starters in the presidential race, and where the left-wing candidate outperformed expectations, nearly making it into the runoff by surprise. It also sounds a bit like how voters are feeling here, frankly, although obviously we don't have a parliamentary system. Both of our major parties and their leaders, Trump and Biden, are held in com contempt by most voters. And what's more, an astonishing 58% of voters said they would prefer an independent over Biden or Trump if faced with that particular matchup again. People are done with these dudes. We just regrettably don't have a whole lot of alternatives here. Now, the other big takeaway from Australia, though, is that even with inflation, major foreign policy issues, and disgust with the handling of COVID, the number one issue which proved determinative was climate. Because for Australia, the climate crisis got extremely real and extremely terrifying over the past few years. 
They suffered through droughts and floods and those massive fires unfolding while Morrison, of course, launched in Hawaii. According to NBC News, polling in the lead-up showed that 8 out of 10 Australians wanted great climate action from the government. 70% 70 of respondents said they believed climate change was already impacting the country, and environment was the most mentioned issue on social media during the campaign, ahead of the economy and ahead of corruption. Here, Australia is also part of a broader trend. Green parties have been steadily building their vote totals and electoral power across Europe. In fact, Green Party vote share has increased in at least 13 different European countries in their last elections. In the U.S., of course, the picture is a bit different. While the youth-led climate movement has dramatically shifted the contours of our debate, the entrenched two-party system keeps our own Green Party extremely marginal. <laughs> and entrenched corruption and coziness with the oil and gas industry keeps significant climate action perpetually out of reach. But... There is no doubt that that climate movement has risen in importance with groups like Sunrise pushing candidates on climate issues and helping to elect candidates like AOC and like Ed Markey. Obviously, what happens in Australia politically, it's ultimately all about Australia. It's the characters, the history, the culture, the Speedos. I simply cannot <laughs> imagine an American politician surviving the scandal of that bathing attire, but I digress. But when you see trends go global, it is worth taking note of. And in election after election, voters keep sending the message that one way or another, they are done with inaction and disgusted with the status quo. And that was the part that really piqued my interest. Yeah, it's fascinating. Is that Cable news is ripping us apart, dividing the country, making it impossible to function as a society, and making it impossible to know just what is true and what is false. But the good news is they are failing and they know it. That is why we're building something new, a new mainstream, a healthier one, something more trustworthy, something that we are going to need in one of the most pivotal times in American history. We are building up here for the midterms, for the upcoming presidential election, but we need your help. So if you can help us out by becoming a premium member today at breakingpoints.com, we're trying to change America for the better and the entire world. So what are you waiting for, guys? Go to breakingpoints.com and sign up and help us build a new mainstream.